Good morning guys, this is Richard back at you. It's been a busy, busy week. It's Saturday morning, a little chilly outside, but it's still beautiful. We got Teresa coming in this morning to do a little bit of video, and we got Annie hanging out. Today, we've got uh, a core uh, that we're gonna be tearing down. Now, the customer uh, is bringing his truck, the case is busted on it, had some drive shaft issues and stuff like that. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and build him up a core that we've uh, got out back, brought in. But it's still got all the cables, adjustments and stuff like that on this one here to kind of give you an idea how these things work, okay? Uh, this is a like a 46, 47 RE, excuse me. Yeah, 46, 47. Uh, cable operated, non-TV motor. So in other words, if you go to the 47s, 48 REs, the later versions through there, they'll have a TV motor. In other words, when you move the gas pedal, the motor will turn this lever here and pull it back. You let off the gas, the motor lets go and turns it back. So on a cable operation, this will go up to the throttle body, to the gas pedal, and when you give it gas, you'll pull this cable and it'll move this lever. And what that does is it raises TV pressure, which raises shifting pressure delays the shifts farther out, plus you have passing gear. Now, this is a totally computer controlled style. It has no governor back here in the back on the overdrive section, or anything like that. So it's totally computer controlled, now, but the TV is not. So pretty simple, but I'm gonna get all this stuff off. The main thing on these TV cables is, every time you let off the gas, the, the TV lever has to go back. If you leave this little spring off right here, See, it didn't go back. It didn't go back. You have to have that spring pulling that lever back. If it stays up like this, when you come to a stop, you're going to have really harsh downshifts because it, it raises the pressure no more than you uh, give it gas. In other words, you put this uh, tranny in gear, uh, we uh, tap onto this uh, accumulator port over here, and then uh, we put it in gear. We can see uh, kind of like accumulator pressure, what I call it. It's really not so much line pressure but it does give us some idea of what we got going on. So what we like to do is uh, put it in gear, look at the gauge, see where our pressure's at. If it's slacking, just, if it's down just a little bit, we'll come in here, you can adjust it here at this cable. You can pull this back. This piece here will move in and out to the center here. You can take this piece off. It's just an old cable we're gonna be trashing anyway, so Let's see if I can get this off here. This is basically a lock. Try to get this. So what you, you do here is, uh, if you want it to shift earlier and softer, you'll push this forward, and then you'll put this lock back in, and it'll hold it right there. If you want it to shift later and firmer, you pull it back a little bit like that. Shifts later and firmer. Now what we do, is, a lot of these, um, when we get done putting them in, all the shift kits and stuff, we put the vehicle on the floor like that. And what we do, this linkage right here just pops off. When it's on the floor, this needs to just set right on there. You don't need to pull the lever forward and put it on. You need to push this all the way back, put the vehicle on the floor, make sure that just sets on there perfectly like that, let off the gas. Now, if you have a little bit of harsh downshifts after it warms or something, you can take and, and slack it off just a little bit, put it back on. Now you can, a lot of times, if you don't want to mess with this right here, what we can do, we can get under the vehicle and take a screwdriver and this bracket right here, we can actually kind of bend it. See? And it does the same thing. See how it'll move it for, let me hook that back on there. So it's basically doing the same thing. It'll take and move the, the cable bracket forward, which will move this part forward. So it's easier than instead of getting on the hood, taking the cover off and kind of messing with it that way. But you can do it either way. The main thing is do not forget this spring because it causes all kinds of issues. This is not selective. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. No, you don't want to lose it. That's a, kind of a special little spring, a little carburetor spring you could go put back on there or something. Get your TV lever. got our shift lever here. Normally there's a little plastic cup in here that pops the lever on. The rest of your lever comes down through here and hooks here and you, when you move your shifter lever. 
Now you notice this here when it went into park, it kind of hard to get out. Now we'll repair that. We make a, or we don't make it, but uh, Sonex makes a kit for it. Transgo makes a kit for it. Thick, thick, huh? Yeah. Well, it could be a good core, hopefully. Well, good, but you better not be spraying that. <laughs> That's some nasty stuff. See this big old long cable here? I don't know if, know if you could even get one of them anymore. And we have our intermediate band adjustment right here and anchor bolt and nut here. Now this will go all the way inside and hook to the anchor for your second gear band. And we have our bracket back here in the back that uh, lets you get to the uh, snap ring, I guess you could call it, that uh, keeps your overdrive system all lined up. We see a lot of wear in this area right through here uh, where the snap ring sets down in the case. I don't know if you can see it right now. I'll get my flashlight see if you can look down in and see. It actually looks really nice. Yeah, you can see it really good. Yeah, I don't see no wear right mm -hmm. here or anything. Mm -hmm. Now, we will put a, a protector in there anyway. I'll get back to coming over here and showing you guys. This here, anytime you have wear in the snap ring part of the case back there, you can stick one of these in there. And it'll actually bring it all back up the flush and, and just a little bit more. It'll actually move everything forward in the tranny and tighten up all your clearances where you almost don't have to do nothing to them. So unless you start changing a bunch of parts and stuff like that, then you could get in trouble. You can see it's a piece right here. Now on some of the four-wheel drives, we'll have to grind these tabs down a little bit just so it sets flush and not high on this end right here. But it sets right down in here like this. There's a big bearing down in there. And they talk about, uh, you know, two facing tabs towards the rear of the housing. These two tabs here set down in there. But if it sets up a little bit, you have to just grind this here just a little bit so it sets flush. So really nice piece right there. Put them in every one we do. Okay. Let me get this overdrive housing off real quick. Well, we do have an uh, anniversary coming up here pretty quick, kind of, sort of. Uh, it's been, uh, I believe, uh, a year almost to the date that our, our Milwaukee impact showed up at the door. Uh, it's been working really good. All of our Milwaukee tools have been working really good. We abuse them, abuse them, drain them, drip them in oil, clean them with carburetor cleaner, and I mean, they really work good, but it's been a year since we've been using them stuff that the first one showed up at our door and Trent's been buying them, Teresa's been buying them for us and stuff like that. So guys, believe it or not, these really do work. If you need one, go get you one for Christmas coming up, stuff like that. So, uh, I mean, they work. We've abused them, dropped them, beat them, drowned them in oil, everything you can do to these things, we've done them. So, and I mean, we've got all their tools. So if you need one, go get them. Christmas is coming up. <laughs> now we have an output speed sensor here, got a lot of metal on it. We'll get them in here and uh, they'll actually have fluid inside the housing. They won't be cracked or nothing, but I don't know how it gets in there, but you'll clean it up good and you'll see it looks pink on the inside where there's fluid physically in there. So replace all of them, pretty simple. OK, 
Okay. And we'll get this overdrive housing off here. This thing has a pretty good smell to it. Probably going to be burned up in a few places. Okay, when it's a core, we don't know how much, how many miles are on it. We don't know nothing about them. So it's a chance you take when you buy them. You hope your core guy, you know, just tells you, hey, it's a good core. And it is what it is. But here we have our overdrive assembly. Clutch is burned up here. Now, you can see here, it's kind of crazy this being a diesel, uh, that it's only got four clutches in overdrive. You notice how they have this real thick plate right here. Let me stack this all back together. Yeah, they got that real thick plate. Now, when you build these back, you always want the thick, this plate here to go towards the snap rings down in the bottom, and then you'll stack it up all the way to the end until you get to a steel at the top. That way you get all the clutches you can get in there. You do not have to put this plate back in there. We would throw this, even in a gas vehicle, we'd throw this thing plumb away. So. Yeah, those are trash. Yep, those are trash. So. Does this sound like metal? Yep, it does. Looking at all them. See what I got going on here. And we have our first snap ring that we're bringing out. It's going to be a wavy snap ring. And then we're going to have a flat snap ring down in here. You don't want to put the wavy first. You always want to put the solid one and then the wavy. And then make sure you always put your opening out of the, this here. Get our overdrive planted out of there. And then we have our seal down in here and our parking assembly down in here. Okay, guys, I'm up. Go get some parts really quick. I'll be right back. I just had to go get a book and kind of look at some things, kind of verify some things and make sure everything's right. Bless you, Teresa. But um, I got the look, and this is a diesel. This is totally diesel all the way through. But I'm believing that somebody switched a gas overdrive housing onto this tranny because the more I get to looking at this, we only had four clutches in overdrive. And our overdrive direct clutch doesn't have any in it neither. The snap ring uh, is really low in the groove, so I know it's gonna be down on clutches. Uh, if it had a high snap ring, we knew, we'd know we'd have a, a diesel style drum that holds a lot of clutches in there, at least nine. So, we're gonna, I'm gonna press this out really quick and just get an idea and kinda look what type of planetary, see if we even have a five pinion planet even. So, let me get my stuff together really quick. Try to move some things around over here. But I'm pretty sure this is all gas stuff here too. And that's why um, it looks the way it does. There's just no clutches in here. Okay. Now we're going to release uh, the, the main spring in here and the clutch pack at the same time. So we're going to get our wavy snap ring, snap ring out of here. Can't talk today. Too much thinking going on. <laughs> These things always do kind of scare me. I don't know what it is about them. They're just terrifying. Now what we did is we took this uh, spiral ring here, stainless wire ring that goes in here that holds the spring and everything captured into this part here. And then we took the wavy snap ring out of the drum that holds the clutches. So we're gonna try to back this off really slow and make sure it releases good. 
because it can hang right through here and if it ever stops and quits coming out t towards the top then you better stop I'm running. because you can actually take this snap ring out pull that out of there and that thing still be loaded and it is one dangerous piece of equipment there let me tell you <laughs> Yes, it come right out of there. So that's good. Yeah. Now if you notice here, we've just got a four pinion planet down in here. Not a, that that wouldn't be in any type of diesel. That'd be a gas only. And we have our dual sprag assembly here in the bottom. Now this thing will go on two different ways, guys, let me tell you. Um, if you take this off, you can put this back in there just like this, and you put it in backwards. It'll go right back in here. And it'll work. It just locks the wrong direction. So, just remember, your spring always pushes your roller uphill. And if you notice here, on backwards, the spring is pushing the roller downhill. So if you take and turn it over, put it in there like that, now the spring is pushing the roller uphill. That's the right direction. So if you always remember that, you'll never go wrong on those. So, but if you notice here, on this direct drum uh, clutch here, uh, the snap ring groove is way down here. They make them where the snap ring groove is all the way to the top right here for the diesel. That way you can get more clutches in this area right here. So are you saying somebody put an overdrive gas, gas. housing mm -hmm. on a diesel? Yes, that's why you notice here too, these clutches are burn up because there's only one, two, three, four, five, six. Say on a diesel, there's nine. Nine of these. So that's how weak this overdrive section was. And then, you know, you, I, I was telling you there's only four here, when there can be five and six. So, and of course, your four gear planetary should be five or six, no matter what, behind a diesel. So, now they did change the angle of this sun gear here. They changed the angle of these teeth here, too, because they had issues. Uh, what they, the angle of this gear right here is mainly is to keep it quiet. If you put too much angle on it, it puts too much load on these washers right here and takes them out. Well, the first design, that's what was happening. So they took and stood the gear up a little bit, like this. Left a little angle on it still, that way it's not noisy like a school bus. You know, your school bus takes off the first gear, you hear that wah, 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 it shifts, wah, 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 keeps on whining. That's because these gears right here are straight cut. I actually have one out in the trailer I could go grab and show you real quick. You got five Sorry. seconds, I'll be right back. <laughs> yeah, I was counting. Okay. But anyway, this is the early, early design overdrive planetary. You can see we have five pinions, straight cut gears, angle cut gears. This setup here is uh, winds in overdrive. So if you're going down the highway in overdrive, you're gonna you might as well expect a little bit of wine out of this. A lot stronger because it doesn't have a load pushing on these thrust washers right here. This gear just spins along. There's no forward or, forwards or backwards load on it. Now when you put this style planet in here, you also got to have the straight cut gear here. Because this gear, this outer ring gear is uh, angle cut too. So there's three things you have to change. Sun gear, your planet, your outer ring gear. And when you do that, you bumped up overdrive a, a ton when it comes to load and stuff like that. But if you only got four clutches here, I don't care how bad you make your overdrive, you ain't, you ain't doing you no good. I mean, it's just going to go out because you're going to have clutch failure. And here's our big 800 pound spring. These are the springs that we used on our little dog we made of Annie. You know, if you've, everybody's been staying up with us, we made some trophies here a while back. And we made a dog that looked like Annie. Well, these are the two springs we put in the middle of the body and give it the springy effect. So, pretty neat. Now, one thing here though, guys, you got to be careful on. 
this overdrive anchor lever pin assembly through here for this lever on a diesel is bigger than a gas the angle of it everything about it is different if you put a gas anchor and stuff here in one and you put it behind a diesel with a heavy load you won't pull it out of park the weight of the truck almost makes it not come out of park even because you just can't pull it now this gear here is the same they didn't change it at all so so you can use the housing but you have to change everything no inside. no, no ma'am okay. the, the the housing uh, bore and the housing for the pin is bigger too for diesel I see. now i'll take this apart and look because this could be a diesel housing and they just put gasoline parts in it see until i pull that pin and mic the the dimer that uh, or pull the pin out of here and mic it and look at it and see if it's a bigger or, or smaller diameter. Okay. See, so, you know, the rest of it, that, that, the housing could be a diesel, but the gas, that stuff there is all gas. So, now we're going to get back here, get our overdrive piston out. Now on these here, um, they have some really shortcut seals in them. The lips on them are really shortcut. There's almost no lip on the seal. And of course, you can see the bite out of it where when the clutches burn up, it pushed the piston out and the, the seal blew out and then it cut the piston or cut the seal when the piston went back in. Okay. But uh, your forward clutch center seal looks just like this one. But uh, it's a long cut. The, the, the seal's about so much taller right here. So you don't want to get them mixed up. Now we got all three eighths bolts right here. These gold ones here. Now we have our neutral safety switch right here. We have our computer connector here. Of course there's no oil in it since it's a core. But all this stuff will be replaced. We'll gut this cut case down and put it in our instant clean machine out there and just let it rip we'll get this thing back out and it'll look brand new That is some nasty looking stuff there, guys. I don't think you could service this and make it go any further. Now, I'm going to show you something here real quick since it's... Well, let me get the filter off. Now, we go back. We won't go back with the factory filter. We'll go back with a high-flow style filter uh, that sucks on top and bottom. A lot better filter. But I wanted to show you something here that also we replaced. This is a... Your neutral safety switch cam right here this little plastic piece right here there's a little ball right in this switch right here that runs on this right here and it tells you when you're in park reverse neutral and stuff like that that way your backup lights come on it starts in park starts in neutral so we always replace that piece too every time i'll get the valve body off and give show you what i'm talking about how bad uh, those get wore out now we Everyone we get in here, we replace. But every time we get one in here that's supposed to be rebuilt, they're never replaced. Transtar has them over Raymond over there, always hooking me up. And like I said, we are going to be putting a really nice ATS deep pan on here. We have it sitting over here on the... Uh, table over here with all of our Sonex parts and stuff. <laughs> we got Sonex parts laying everywhere. I mean, if you ain't putting Sonex parts in your trannies, you, you've got a problem. But anyway, you can see this right here. This is where that neutral safety switch runs right there. 
kind of wipe it off. You can kind of see where it's starting to get wore. It'll wear down so bad here that it'll, the, the switch will start getting caught in here where you can't move your shifter and stuff. It'll get down and start touching on this stuff. We replace every one of them. Actually, when I get over here, I'll show you uh, what everything looks like that we're going to be putting in this unit. Now, our, our shift kit that we're going to be putting in here, our Transgo kit, comes with all the, the pieces that uh, usually breaks themselves and tears up and all that type of stuff in these valve bodies. But anyway, this right here is a really big problem that we see in every one of these that come in. It'll break this bracket right here, spit the spring out, break it right here, and next thing you know, you have no lockup. Right here. You can see it's already broke. Now your shift kit, let me see if I can grab one. Just, actually I do. Here's one that goes for a shift kit. A lot thicker, sets back in here. That way it don't break again. So, pretty simple. Now this little bolt here is special. It's made to tighten down, but still let this pivot. That way it gets lined up and you don't break it off right here. You can see the shank on it where it'll tighten down against, but then this still will here move. That way you can get it up in the tranny and not break this off. Special, so don't lose it. It is special. Right in your pile right there. Okay. Now you notice here on your, your rooster comb for your park and stuff, how that's what that is. And you, Move your shifter, you feel that click, 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 click. This is what you're feeling right there. If you notice that ball right there is totally wore out in the bore. In other words, when I move it, see how it rocks back and forth? Mm -hmm. That's because this check ball only works in this little area right here. Now we're going to put a piece in here that comes in our shift kits. Uh, it looks like a little torpedo looking thing. Let me go grab it real quick. If I can I have them laying everywhere. Let's see. Here they are. Now our Transgo kit does come with this. Now, but we buy these separate because if we get a, a customer in here that just uh, wants this fixed or something like that, and he don't want a shift kit, and he just wants this repaired, and we can go in there and repair it. Now this is what we're working with right here. This here uses the whole bore right here to control the park like that. Let me pop this out of here. Got a little snap ring there. Got a little washer here. That you do not want to lose. Don't want to lose. When I take this off, that's going to pop out of there, of course. There it is. Now you can see your ball and spring right here. You clean that all up and then you put this in here, it doesn't let it wobble. It keeps it all steady all the way through the when it's being pushed in. You want to clean it really good though. I'm just kind of giving you guys an idea. But you want to throw that stuff away. Now also, once you do that, this rooster cone here still has an issue. We come in here, if you notice this little shank right here almost it stands straight up right here. And that's why it wears the ball out. Even though you put your new bullet in there, it does soften it up to go over this ramp right here. But we still like to come in here and take a buffer and just take a little bit of that off right here. That way it can go over it with having, without having to kind of climb and then flip over it. It just kind of round it off just a little bit right here. And I'm telling you, it just makes it go boop right out of park. Really nice. You got a new spring or new seal here. Comes in your kit. I'll go ahead and take this off here to give you an idea what that kind of looks like. Oh, that breaks and then you just tap your new one you just take put that spring in there like that nice and big old thick bracket 
Got that way. We have our lockup tube. Got two tabs that hold it. I always take and bend them back like that. That way I don't have to do it when I'm assembling it. We have our fourth gear accumulator here. Now the, the kit, the, uh, Transco makes two style of shift kits uh, for this area right here. Uh, the, the early design, uh, or the early kit, the smaller kit, what I'm saying is, they want you to drill a hole through here and stuff like that and use your factory cover. Now the, the, the more expensive kit uh, that comes with everything you really need to get, and, and that's the kit I recommend to get now, uh, it'll come with a cover that has a hole in it. That way you don't have to drill all the way through here for a vent. It vents out the cover for the piston. Now you can see here uh, our overdrive accumulator spring is kind of stuck in here, like a few pieces. You can say that's a new style. The fourth gear accumulator springs right here uh, for gas or diesel are different. Uh, they make them really wimpy looking and then they make them really beefy looking. Beefy. This is your diesel, excuse me, I grabbed the wrong one. Here's a diesel here, a solid one that looks normal. Really big spring. The gas one, the spring is just, you can just squeeze it yourself. I always take and put the diesel one in there anyway. That way it does give me a little bit nicer uh, overdrive shift on the gas one. So, years of experience uh, knowing how to play with these things is... is we lost our special boat in there. Ah, uh, we'll find her. And we have our governor pressure sensor and solenoid. We have our sensor here, our solenoid here. We always try to go back with the OEM Chrysler uh, solenoid and the Chrysler uh, sensor. Now the shift kit will come with a plate uh, that goes in between the gasket and the, the valve body here. You'll put that on there and the plate will go here and you bolt it back down. So, so we always go back with uh, a new, new ones there definitely. And then on your, um, your solenoids, Anytime you have a connector with fluid in it, which is 99.9% .9 of the time, uh, I actually did a job the other day. We just changed all of this stuff up, uh, put a clutch fan on it because it had clutch fan codes, uh, and, and he's gone down the road doing, uh, making money. Now, let me tell you something, guys. Anytime you have converter pulsating, overdrive pulsating on these Dodges, and you have a clutch fan code, you better look at that clutch fan code because the ground circuit for the clutch fan, your overdrive solenoids, and your alternator are all on the same circuitry. So if you have an alternator that's working fine uh, and you're having converter pulsating or something like that at 45 mile an hour or so, and uh, even though your alternator looks good, charging good, if you go out there and unhook the, the alternator and go drive it and it goes away, you have a bad alternator whether it's charging or not. Now also, if you have a clutch fan code, uh, replace it. No matter what, you have to get rid of that clutch fan code because the clutch fan can physically mess with shifting with a tranny tube. So they tied so much stuff onto that ground circuit on these Dodges that, that causes that pulse in fourth gear and lockup stuff like that. Battery cables. Uh, battery cables on the side of the motor. We buff the block on both sides and we buff the cables when we uh, bolt them back on, clean the cables and stuff like that. I actually got a list. Uh, uh, from uh, ATRA on every repair it takes. We start the battery cables and work our way down and just eliminate things and try to get rid of that, that problem. So. Now, on our pressure regulator spring uh, valve and stuff here and our spool valve, we replace all that stuff with Sonex stuff, every bit of it. Now we're going to go with a full lube uh, PR valve here. That, probably I'm taking it apart a little bit more to get things. Yeah, it's still. Let me get this apart a little bit more. We got our manual valve.
Now you notice here we have a longer screw, it has a bigger washer on it. Goes right there. And our screw here uh, that holds the bracket on for your, your pressure regulator valve and your spooling valve, uh, some of these can be longer or some can be shorter. So you have a short one there, but I've seen them with long ones. Not this one, but this one. These here. So now when you put these valve bodies back together, this bolt here and this bolt here is physically what lines everything up. I like to put them all in and then bring these two down to surface uh, where they're just flush, where you can move it around, make sure everything's straight, and then I'll start here and work my way out like that. So. Now here we have our lockup assembly here, our overdrive assembly here. You can see just how nasty that is. There's three little holes right here that you want to definitely clean out, make sure all this stuff is really clean. Your shift kit will come with converter fill valves, springs, I mean just different things your shift kit will come with. Uh, now, the shift kit too, uh, that uh, we buy now, you can uh, actually put it in where you can have um, manual lockup with a toggle switch type deal. You can lock it up in second gear. So if you want that option. We have a little bitty check ball right here. A little bitty. And we're going to throw it in the pile. Yeah, it, it rolled over there somewhere. Yeah. Oh. Now our shift kit, of course, is going to come with a new plate. Now our new shift kit that we use comes with three plates in the kit that you have to you choose from and stuff like that. You really got to read your instructions. So if you buy the smaller kit, it comes with a plate too, but it's only one plate instead of three. Okay, you can't talk and use power tools. I'm sorry. Okay, guys. I got in trouble. <laughs> okay, what we got here, um, this is it right here, let me get a rag and wipe that off. If you're going to try to identify an early, early valve body from a 48RE valve body, you're going to look right here. If there's a little tiny hole right here, it's a 48. So you want to look for that. It's going to ask you in your shift kit right when you get to the first page of uh, your paperwork. Now we have uh, your second gear feed hole here. We have your two third gear feed holes here. You notice this one here is where uh, it's really big here and this one's small. Well, they're letting it come through here and they're restricting it here. So basically you can leave this one alone and just come in here and drill this one out here and you're doing this, you're helping your third gear. Now, another reason why they come with a plate is because on your reverse check ball right here, since it's got a metal ball in it, it always damages the plate right there. It's always damaged. Your forward, you don't see it as much right here, but you will see it. Now we'll go back with a rubber check ball, these right here, I have them over there in a the box, and uh, we'll get these metal ones out of here because these balls here will last just as long, this style. So, now you notice here, all the balls here are small, and then you have one big one right here. Okay, but there's balls in all the troughs. Now your shift kit's going to come with a little bullet looking thing that goes in here. And then you got your two metal check balls there. They go here your forward and your, your reverse. You don't want to leave them out at all. Oh, bless you, Teresa. There's something in that. It, you can smell it. It's got like an additive in it. You can smell it pretty good. Now, this is our four valve switching valve here. Sonex, we're gonna be putting it in there, a new one. Uh, it looks a little bit different, but it, it goes right in. Read your instructions, it talks about drilling a hole in your plate, stuff like that. So, also it'll talk to you about grinding the land off right here. 
if you're using the, the small kit. So just a little bitty pie cut out of there. Now our Sonex uh, pressure regulator valve, it's a full loop style valve. It that physically has a hole here and a hole right here and it has a check ball and a spring here. And what it does is when you uh, fire it up in park, it lets enough oil go by here, push this check valve open and lets it get on the other side of this land right here and put lube oil into the circuit. I'm going to go grab it real quick, pull it out of the package. Now all these trannies we do guys, we Sonex them to death. You cannot put enough Sonex parts in these things. Now you can see here, valve lube regulator, pressure regulator valve from Sonex. Now you can kind of open that up, pull it out of there, it's really nice, packed good. But if you come in here and look, first of all, you want to make sure nobody's drilled a hole here across this land right here. If they have, you need to plug it. Cotter key, some type of weld, something to plug it if they have. Okay? Now what Sonex did, if you can see here, this hole right here, and then this hole right there. Mm -hmm. There's a check ball and spring that's in the bottom of this valve where this valve here is solid. So when you start it up, it lets that check valve open up and put lube oil through here, across this land right here. But when you turn it off, it shuts. That way you don't have no leakage. And that's what you want. So, really nice piece. Now, if you do, let me tell you guys, if you start mixing shift kits, you gotta know what you're doing. Uh, because you can get in trouble when you start mixing shift kits and, and we mix shift kits here because Some work better in areas other works better in areas, you know that type of stuff and we just see it and, and we like to Play around a little bit and, and just make it just so perfect. I mean, that's how we want it Now your new shift kit too will come with a TV spring And it'll come with a new TV valve here right here now the new valve this part here will be longer through here and this shank's going to be shorter and the spring's going to be different it's going to be a blue spring but it, it gives it so much more sealing in the surface area the way Sonex designed it now you can see here we got wear on this one already the anodizer is wore off stuff like that so you definitely want to put, you know, pay attention to that area every time. That's why we started updating our uh, to the better shift kits, a lot bigger shift kits and stuff, because these are all coming in with really high mileage now, every one of them, and, and they all need repairing. So, pretty neat. A little bit here. Okay, guys. Now here we have our uh, one-two accumulator and piston here and spring. Now the shift kit's going to come with a different spring. We don't see any issues usually with these or anything. We can always put new seals on them, clean them up, scotch brite in here a little bit, make them seal better, and put them back in. Now, of course, they make aftermarkets with dual seals, triple seals, all kinds of seals. Is it better? Of course. You know, but we don't see any physical issues with these here at all either. So. Can you shut that door? This one? Yeah. Pretty cool out this morning. Yes. Now, here we have our intermediate band here. And I talked about this piece coming through all the way through the case. And what it does, it sets in here like this and you adjust your band. Okay, and then this is your a servo here that applies your band. And then here's your other anchor. Now you can see here this old drum isn't looking very good. <laughs> it looks pretty chewed up. But we'll get in here and see if this band's bad or did somebody put this band on this bad drum? Because that's 90% of the time what they do. So.
Now we are putting a Sonex input shaft in here to sturdy it up a lot. I'm curious to see what size of pump we have here because if somebody's been in here there's no telling what we have. There's just no telling. Of course you can see here we have a little bit of rust down in the bore down in here. Got a new, of course we'll put a new bushing here and we'll go in here with a, a slight hone and just try to clean this up, make sure there's no pitting or anything like that where our new seals are going to be running and see if we can save that stator. Get them impact sockets and they're so much thicker. But I got me a little socket that I grinded on, kind of sharp edged it right in here so I can get down in places like this. Well, we can see we have a gas pump in here too. It's the smallest, one of the smallest pumps Chrysler put in their, their gas vehicle. So I can tell you there that that's got to be replaced. Let me see if I have one over here. Because the last time I had to get two of them out of California. And I might be out. Yeah, I got a 400 one there. So we're going to have to get a couple of them coming today. That way we can get this all put together. Because I'm going to have this put back together before we get his truck here. That way we can just pull it out and, and let it go. Put a nice one in there. Very small pump. This pump here just doesn't supply enough fluid pressure and volume uh, for a big old triple disc torque converter and stuff like that. It just won't work. Now it does have a dimpled style bushing in it. Which that's the style we put in all of them. You want to check across here, make sure it looks good. Now there's nothing wrong with the pump as long as you put it in a gasoline vehicle, but if you try to put this back in a diesel, then especially with the triple disc converter and stuff like that, you're going to have major problems. Now, here's our drum that's all chewed up. Let's see if our band's chewed up to match. Of course it's not. So that tells me, since this band isn't metal to metal anywhere at all, that they put this band on this drum when they built it back. Because with this much damage on this drum right here, all these ruts, this band would have to be metal to metal somewhere in here to make this do this. So that tells me, you know, they didn't put a good drum in there. what we normally see. Now, you can tell here, since the wavy snap ring's gone here, it's, it's got a flat snap ring, somebody's been in here. Anytime you do that, you know, you can firm up your shift in third gear by putting that snap ring in there, okay? But, let's see how many clutches we have in this poor tranny. Okay, we've got four. So, if it's a 48, 47 RE, it would have five. No doubt in my mind right off the bat. It's got a high groove drum. The snap ring's high on the drum. It's not sitting down here low. But what we'll do is we'll put, we'll get five clutches in here. We'll change this top hat to a forward top hat. And I've showed many people in my videos how to do that on these Dodges and Fords and stuff on how to add clutches. Now this washer here, this one here is selective. To move this stuff around so we have our forward snap ring here we have our lockup sna uh, snap ring our <laughs> forward ceiling ring here and we have our uh, lockup ceiling rings here now we are putting a sonex drum in here one piece really nice where you can see this one here the shaft actually presses out of the forward hub here, the drum. Where the one we're putting in here will be solid all the way through, be one piece. Yep, it's pretty. I'll show them just in a second for sure. 
on your forward clutches we just have four now that this is an early design uh, tranny so they have the the coarse style teeth on the clutches the later design they went to fine teeth and they changed this ring gear right here to fine okay now I'm going to show you how you do put an extra well let me get this piece out here first we have a wavy snap ring down here we have a bevel plate and we have a plastic spacer that this snap ring goes against. They do make metal ones. Some of the early 727s come out with uh, metal ones here. And they do make a different styles as this too. Look and see if I can see if I have one close by I can grab. Mm, yeah, I don't see one right off hand. But you can, they do make them different. With well, this uh, hole here is a lot smaller. And it just puts a lot more metal in here for bowing and stuff. So, this is our forward clutch piston here. This is a long cut seal. This is a long cut seal. This is the seal I was talking about when you get your overdrive piston seal. These seals look identical, but if you notice, this seal is taller than this one. And you can get these mixed up because they're almost exactly the same size and you and you if you can do it you can do it I'm telling you it can be done so but like I said this piece here we're going to be replacing I'm going to go grab this beautiful Sonex piece over here real quick and give you an idea what this stuff looks like this is why we use this if you can see here this shaft is one piece to this hub where this shaft here is pressed in Isn't that a beautiful color. piece? Different yeah. color. Really nice piece. Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Way yeah. Now, like I say, you start changing parts around and stuff. That's when you start having to mess with clearances and stuff like that. So, and there's places on this tranny everywhere to set clearances. But anyway, let's put an extra clutch in this third gear drum. So, what we've got here, we've got four clutches, four and steel. Put that down in there. And you can see how far that clutch from here to here is. Because they were using your, your thick old plate here. So what we're going to do, we're going to take a forward plate. See how it's, it's thick from here to here, but it's thin from here to here. And that's what we're going to be looking at. So what we're going to do, we're going to stick another steel down in there. We're going to stick another clutch. I'm just, it's a forward clutch. It's not the right clutch that goes in there, but we're going to use it. And then you're going to take and stick this down in there like that. And you're going to look at this plate from here to the top of the surface right here and see where that's at. See how that's just a little bit low? If I go get a, the right clutch that goes in here, this clutch right here is a lot thicker than this forward clutch. It'll bring it right up to, to the top. Let me grab one. Okay, here's, okay, we'll put that down in there. There's, there's one that's been shaved. Okay, put that down in there. Put this down in there. See how it raised it? It raised it up just enough right there. Now, since they're going back, they had that big old thick snap ring in there, this thing here in there like this, it might not fit down in there no more, see? won't do it but if you go get you a 350k snap ring this is a 350k snap ring if you ever take them out they always got some type of yellow coating on them, paint but if you take put that in there it'll fit right in there look at that fits right in there now if you put this together and you still don't like your clearance take this back out and what I'm going to do I've got another direct clutch that I shaved the clutch material off of. I'm going to put it on top of that just like that. Now, they're locked together anyway. They're still going to work as one, whether I shaved it off or not. Okay, I'm going to put that in there. Now, if I get that in there and I go to put my snap ring in, and now it's, my clearances are too tight, just saying, 
they're too tight, which they are, what you can do, come over here and shave the clutch lining off of this clutch. And then you put the two metal pieces together, set it down in there, and then your clutch clearance should be just about right. But that's how we adjust clutch clearances, guys. I mean, there's multiple ways of doing it. Different thickness snap rings, buffing clutches, stacking clutches, working it all around uh, to get it to where you want it to be. But let me tell you one thing, guys. When you do this right here, just saying you put it in all together like that, and you put it in here like that, look how high this is sticking up right here. See how high that's sticking up? Way above the snap ring groove. So when this was in there, this was below the snap ring groove. Just remember, look how high that's sticking up. Let me take this out of here. So is that right or wrong? Well, it's, it's, it's right, but i got to show you how to make it work. So just saying we put a clutch in there, we put this steel in there, put snap ring in. Look how much lower that is. It's not sticking up here like this one was. See, it's below the snap ring groove. But since I'm going to add clutches and stuff in here and another steel, let me just get that out of the way and just use one like this. And we put the snap ring groove or the snap ring in like that. Look how much higher this plate is above that snap ring groove. See that? So, when you put this together, your forward, this setting on your forward drum, I'm going to put this all back together really quick. It won't take but a second. Because this is stuff you got to know when you start adding clutches. Put the old piston down in there. All I got to do is just put this piece back together. I don't have to put any clutches or anything in it. Okay. Okay. We got it back together. Okay. When you set this drum on here, this plate right here is going to rub right here since you did that. It's going to set on here instead of set here where it's supposed to set. Okay. It's set down. If you can't see it, that's the problem. It covers it up. You can't see it at all. Okay? But, if I take and put this stator on here, and I air check this third gear drum, it's going to pick it up off this here. There's no fluid in it, Teresa, so you shouldn't run. I'm, but i got to find the circuit. Okay, I'm going to try to do this. Now that's what I'm saying. You got to check it because if it rubs, if when I air check it, it lifts this drum up. That means that drum, the two drums are rubbing, and you cannot do that. And see, and it's it's not it's not touching. Let me lift it up. Make sure it's air checking that drum. Right there. Okay. I'm still going to do this again because I believe that has to be touching. See if I can get that down in there. Well, that's the first that it ain't ever touched, but I would put it back to, I'm going to get it over on the bench when I build it back and check it, because most of the time when we do this, we have to come in here and shave like 70 thousandths off the top of this plate and shave it down to about right here. 
okay? But that's one thing you have to check, especially on your 4100s, your Ford 4100s and stuff like definitely will touch. But you got to really check that every time. But we would cut this down whether it didn't touch or not because we know that it's probably so close to this that it's going to touch sooner someday. So, but that's how you get an extra clutch in there just by using your forward apply plate. Pretty simple. Okay. And we have a three tab washer here that is selective too. This tab washer sets down in here. And then you have a stainless washer that sets on your intermediate shaft. Now if you notice we have uh, a diesel forward planet. So that, that tells you that this was never this piece here was never in a gas. <laughs> they physically did not put steel planets in gases. You might see them in a V10, but that's very seldom too if it ever happened. Now the aluminum planet in the rear is uh, normal for this year of a tranny. We just got a tutti frutti going. Yeah, we do. We got a little bit of everything. And that's what's bad about cores, but whether it's a core or somebody bringing a vehicle in here, 90% uh, of the time when we take the tranny out of the vehicle, it's, it's a tutti frutti too because it's already been into by somebody that didn't have the parts to fix it properly. So, but you can see here, uh, this four pinion aluminum planet physically, the planet's the washer and then it runs, runs on this stainless spacer right here. Okay, you can see all the pitting here. Mm -hmm. So, definitely got to have a new planet, but on this one here, we're going to be upgrading uh, to a steel six pinion planet and get rid of that. Now also the shell, um, you've got to update the shell to the thick shell. You got to update your sun gear to the, the wider groove sun gear. You have a snap ring here and a snap ring here. Since the shell's wider, the groove's wider, you have to update the sun gear too. The, the washer or the snap rings will interchange, uh, but the not, nothing else will. And then we can go with the big old wide six tab 4080 RE washers and six pinion plant and stuff like that. Now the five pinion planted in the front, we'll put that back in here, clean it up, make sure it's good. Come in here and replace the washer here. Now here, like I said, um, they did change the, the teeth on this here to a fine cut or a wide, or, or a wide cut, depending on what year on your forward clutches. I talked about that. And we'll get down in here and get the reverse drum out. Now your washer kit will come with a brass washer here, but the plastic washer, we don't see any issues with that. We have our reverse band. Now this is a, a dual wrap band. The biggest band they put in them. Starting to see a little bit of wear through here. See all the water that's been in this tranny too it looks like. You definitely want to replace anything that's got lining on it. You want to replace it. Of course we have our reverse drum. We always see wear in here um, where the support runs. Your cooler line flow comes in this area right here and lubricates this first right off the bat. Your back cooler line does and puts it on this uh, rear sprag down in here. So if you have any converter failure, anything like that, all the metal is going to go right to that area right off the bat. This is your sprag assembly here. I've never tried to put it in backwards. so I don't know if that'll, if you can do that. But And then here we have our rear case support. You can see here your cooler line oil comes through this big hole right through here to the case and then comes in and lubricates the intermediate shaft, lubricates this drum right here. You can see the hole right there. Now we enlarge that hole actually just to get a little bit more on here. 
Then the new support comes with a seal right here, rubber O-ring that tries to support it, or seal it up a lot better. Letting it leak all out and stuff. Stops all that. Now on your reverse servo, uh, if you have a, wide, a dual wrap band or single, they do make different ones here. If it's a dual wrap, this is real tiny compared to the, the other one. The other one's like that big if it has a single wrap. They need more applied pressure through the piston to hold the band better, where this one here doesn't need that since the band's so big. So, pretty simple. Now they do make different levers for your intermediate here too. We've had good luck with the stock lever. We don't see any issues with it, but you know, unless you just start pulling some massive load and got the motor turned up and stuff like that, you're probably gonna break the tranny other in other places and than burning up the band. So uh, I mean you can break these old Cummins make so much torque, I mean they'll break anything, guys. So but they do make another uh, intermediate servo here too. Uh, it comes with a sleeve that sets down in the case. They shrink this area here, gives it a more ply, gives it more piston surface area, shrinks this down here. So, now there is a seal or an O-ring down in here. Let me see if, I don't know if I can find the hole. See that little hole right there? And there's, this is a cushion too. Uh, the new shift kit uh, that we got uh, physically comes with a spacer you can put in here to eliminate this all together. I don't do that uh, because you can get some pretty firm shifts out of second gear and cause customer complaints and stuff like that. So here we go guys. A diesel core, half gas part. So just think what it's going to cost to really put this thing back to where it's going to be a really nice diesel tranny. Going to take to all my parts out of my shelf pretty much on Teresa it seems like. But this is just a common problem we see even with cores or taking them out of the vehicle where somebody else has been in them and, and they don't have the money to fix it right. So, or, or they just get ripped off, I guess you could say, and they put gas parts in it. The customer can't see inside what he's getting. All he knows is he's just paying the bill. But anyway, Teresa, I definitely want to thank you for recording. This video was pretty long, but I kind of wanted to get to some points on this stuff here too. So definitely thank you very much. Guys, don't forget to subscribe. Uh, we have a bunch more coming, so stay tuned. Have a great day.